a projectile blasts out of the barrel at Mach 6.5, faster than any missile can even blink. Across the sea, a turreted laser slices through the air with silent beams of light. Beijing showcased it during a massive parade marking 80 years since victory over Japan. Two visions of future warfare. Japan's reborn U.S. railgun. China's cutting-edge laser. One delivers unstoppable kinetic slugs, chunks of metal smashing through anything in their path. The other fires endless beams, killing at the speed of light. Both are real. Both now aimed at the same waters. But the big question remains, which one actually works when the fight begins? The answer may decide who dominates Asia's future. Let's break it down. First, the American railgun dream. Back in the early 2000s, the U.S. Navy poured billions into what they believed would end the missile age. A weapon that didn't rely on chemicals or explosives, just raw electromagnetism launching projectiles at nearly Mach 7. The numbers were jaw-dropping. A single shot packed the punch of 200,000 rifle rounds fired at once. A 32 megajoule railgun could hurl a 23-pound slug at over 8,000 feet per second, seven times the speed of sound. Range, over 100 miles. Cost per shot, about $25,000. Compared to a Tomahawk cruise missile costing $1.80 to $4 million, it looked like a Pentagon accountant's dream, missile killing power for the price of a Toyota. But then physics struck back. The gun needed 25 megawatts of power, essentially the full output of a Navy destroyer, just to keep firing. Only the Zumwalt class, with 78 megawatts available, could even think about sustaining it. Barrel life. Terrible. After about 100 shots, rails wore out, accuracy plummeted, and failure risk soared. Guidance was another nightmare. Railgun slugs were brutally fast, but dumb. Great for blasting tanks or ships if they hit. But against maneuvering missiles? Not enough. Adding guidance meant adding cost, size, and complexity. Suddenly, the $25,000 slug didn't look so cheap anymore. Still, the hype machine rolled on. In 2014, test footage of Mach 7 shots went viral. Headlines called it the future of naval warfare. Congress kept writing checks. By 2020, the Navy had sunk more than half a billion dollars into the program. And in 2021, it was gone. Officially, focus shifted to hypersonics and lasers. Unofficially, the railgun had become a $500 million YouTube stunt, proof it could fire, nothing more. For America, the dream of an electromagnetic supergun quietly died in the budget notes. But in Tokyo, that dream was only beginning. Two. Japan brings it back. While Washington shelved its so-called wonder gun, Tokyo refused to quit. Japan's acquisition, technology, and logistics agency, ATLA, took America's abandoned blueprint, salvaged the best parts, fixed the weak spots, and by 2023 did what the U.S. Navy never managed. Fire a railgun at sea, mounted on a real warship, aimed at a real target. The test ship was JSO Sumi, a 6,200-ton experimental platform. On her stern sat a turret unlike anything else afloat, a squared-off box hiding a 5-megajoule railgun. In June and July, ATLA confirmed history, the first live shots from a ship-mounted railgun into a target vessel. Not a lab. Not a trailer. A warship. And this wasn't just symbolism. The test gun pushed slugs at Mach 6.5, around 2,230 meters per second, nearly 5,000 miles per hour. In trials, it fired 120 consecutive shots without self-destructing. That's the holy grail, barrel life. America's prototypes shredded themselves after a few dozen shots. Japan proved a railgun could fire over 100 times without catastrophic wear. For tech once dismissed as fantasy, this was a thunderclap across the Pacific. The setup was surprisingly lean. Power came from a single 20-foot ISO container, with three more stacked with capacitors, enough to store 5 megajoules per shot. Slugs weighed just 0.7 pounds each. Two versions were tested, one armor-piercing, one simplified for mass production. The mission, keep it reliable, keep it affordable, keep it firing. 
but Japan's thinking much bigger. Atlas roadmap points to 20 megajoule guns, quadrupling muzzle energy. Presentations already show railguns drawn onto future 13,000-ton DDX destroyers, the next-gen fleet of the 2030s, and even Maya-class Aegis ships. What Washington abandoned as impractical, Tokyo is preparing to field as operational naval hardware within a decade. The implications? Massive. A Mach 6.5 slug doesn't care about jamming. It doesn't care about weather. It doesn't explode, it just smashes through targets with raw kinetic force. Each shot costs tens of thousands, not millions. Against cruise missiles, drones, or even hypersonics, that's a cost exchange Beijing simply can't win. Think about it. China spends 10 to 15 million dollars on a DF-17 or DF-26 missile. Japan spends $25,000 to swat it out of the sky. That's math no Chinese accountant wants to explain. And Tokyo isn't going solo. In 2024, Japan signed railgun development agreements with France and Germany. ATLA even invited U.S. contractors back into the program. The irony. America hyped it, killed it, and may soon buy into the Japanese version once it actually works. For Japan, the timing is razor sharp. North Korean missile salvos, Chinese expansion in the South China Sea, PLA parades showing off lasers and hypersonics, Tokyo needs a weapon that makes enemies hesitate. The railgun isn't a silver bullet. But it is a statement. A deterrent that says, Fire your million dollar toys, we'll kill them for the price of a Honda Civic. That's why the railgun isn't dead. It just changed its zip code. Washington called it a YouTube experiment. Tokyo turned it into steel, fire, and Mach 6.5 reality. 3. China's Laser Army versus Japan's Railgun In 2025, Beijing went beyond parades. On the 81st anniversary of victory over Japan, the PLA unveiled a new weapon meant to send a message, the LY-1 high-energy laser. Mounted in a massive turret with a wide-beam aperture and multiple tracking optics, this wasn't just a dazzler for blinding cameras. It was pitched as a frontline defense system, a beam designed to burn drones, fry missile seekers, and scorch anything flying too close to China's fleet. State media called it precision destruction and consistent strike. Analysts compared it to America's Helios program, a laser powerful enough, at least in theory, to kill anti-ship missiles before they strike. Lasers promise unbeatable economics. Each shot costs pennies, just electricity. As long as there's power and cooling, the magazine is endless. A swarm of drones worth thousands can be erased with beams that barely touch the electric bill. But the flaws are brutal. Lasers scatter in haze, rain, or salt spray. Atmosphere drains power. Optics corrode at sea. To burn through a supersonic missile, the beam must stay locked for seconds, fragile in turbulence. Even after years of Helios trials, the U.S. Navy admits naval lasers are a struggle. Beijing knows it too. Their LY, one laser looks powerful at parades, but dust and weather don't follow propaganda. Japan's answer is steel. Atlas railgun on JSO Sumi fires slugs at Mach 6.5, over 2,200 meters per second. It managed 120 rounds without failing, proving what America couldn't. Each shot costs about $25,000, pocket change compared to multi-million dollar missiles. So which system rules? It depends. Lasers crush drone swarms. 100 drones could cost a railgun $2.5 million to kill, while a laser does it for pennies. But against hypersonics, the math flips. 20 DF-17s worth $250 million? Japan answers with 20 railgun rounds, just half a million dollars. China pays millions per shot. Japan pays thousands. Railguns ignore fog, storms, and jamming. Lasers don't. Lasers fire endlessly. Railguns reload, but magazines hold hundreds of rounds. Lasers burn silently. Railguns punch holes through steel. Neither wins alone. Together, they're devastating. And here's the irony. The U.S. invented both. 
It built Mach 7 railguns, spent $500 million proving them, then scrapped the program. It tested Helios lasers, then stalled in budgets. Now Tokyo fires railguns. Beijing parades lasers. Washington debates. The shot that echoes, Asia isn't waiting. China says, we can blind and burn anything that flies. Japan says, we can smash your million dollar missiles for the price of a car. The US must choose, join Japan's program and embrace lasers, or watch the Pacific arms race pass it by. Because when the first shot echoes, it won't be jets or missiles deciding who leads. It'll be slugs at Mach 6.5 and beams of light. That duel will define Asia's skies. Stay tuned, we're tracking every breakthrough, every weapon, and every move in the Shadow War.